Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Uh, everything, for those of you who are in person, everything you need for today's service will be up on the screens. Uh, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, uh, everything you need, you can find in the comments section. There should be a link that will take you to the online bulletin. We've had a great day today. Uh, Bishop Reed is here with us. We'll have a couple of confirmations. We've got some first communions, and it's going to be just a great, great day. So I'm going to turn it over to our music team. On our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 472. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory. You have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, 
One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Eustace, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is the first psalm. It can be found in our Book of Common Prayer on page 585, or you can follow along on the uh, screens above. We will read the psalm in unison. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked, they are like chaff which the wind blows away, the bright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Let us stand and join together in our sequence hymn, Speak, O Lord.
According to St. John, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It's wonderful, as I said, to be back here with you at St. George on such a beautiful day that the Lord has made. And, and you can't complain about the rain because later on this summer we'll all be crying for rain again. But it is such a beautiful morning inside the church and outside, and I'm, I'm blessed to be with you. Uh, always thankful for time with your rector, Ram and Susan, um, who brought me tacos. To, um, I told her I'm going to start using her as an example around the diocese so that uh, every other priest in the diocese is going to hate Susan because she's she brings me tacos. Um, well, that's not. That's reason to celebrate, of course, but that's not the big reason. The big reason is that we're together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and this is the day that the Lord has made. Um, we also are, are blessed with two confirmations today. So we're, don't, don't get up, but Eric and Katrin, where are you all hiding? Okay, there, and raise your hand high. Good, good, I'm glad you're here, and, and this, you all are doing a beautiful thing for the Lord and for this church today. So thank you. Uh, they're going to take up a ministry today that they, they haven't been warned about, but it's a ministry they share with everybody, and that is to help us remember, to help us remember our own baptisms, 
not the moment of our baptism necessarily, but what our baptism means. Uh, they'll help us remember who we belong to and whose we are and who we are in Jesus Christ by water and the Holy Spirit. They'll be helping to lead us out of the many distractions that we come to and sort of the general amnesia that falls over us uh, when we forget uh, that we are the children of God. Well, I searched the scriptures today carefully. I read and reread the readings that you just heard and I, in desperation, looking, searching, for something to give you to do, to, to find some, some work that I could call on you to do in response to these readings, some large action that you needed to take on in response to the living word of God. I just couldn't find anything. I feel like a failure that I'm not going to give you a bunch of work today. So, so for this morning, for this morning, don't just do something, sit there. Okay, don't just do something, sit there. So art frames a moment. Can you imagine any work of art, whether it's a painting or a photograph, a story or a movie or a song. Good art frames a moment. There's, there's what came before, what's in the, the picture, and then there's what comes after. And then there's that moment that is captured, whether it's a single moment, say a, a photograph that captures something, or whether it's a, a more leisurely spooling out of a story. Um, there is within that frame something for us to gaze upon. Often what's in the frame will give meaning to what came before and will help illuminate what comes after. And in capturing that moment in time, the artist is hoping to capture captivate us too, to draw us into that moment. Today's gospel set in the upper room of the Last Supper is like that. It's framed between the ending of Jesus' three years of public ministry and the beginning of Holy Week, his passion, his death, his resurrection. In the several chapters that St. John devotes to capturing that night, this passage between the ascension, I'm sorry, this, this passage catches us, hopes to captivate us both as witnesses and as eavesdroppers. We're listening in, we're watching. But for us, the church also frames it in a different way. The church places this passage between the ascension of our Lord, which was Thursday, and the Feast of Pentecost, the birthing of the church and the sending out of the church into the world, which will be next Sunday. So we have this moment in the upper room that, that ties that together, those events in the history of the church. We're given it to here now between when the crucified, risen, and triumphant king goes not away. Jesus doesn't go away from us, but ascends to be with us and for us in heaven. So we have that, and then we anticipate the Pentecost, the sending of the Spirit, the ongoing presence of Christ who descends and births and sends the church out. The primary part of the good news in John's gospel is that for the followers of Jesus, eternal life begins right now and begins right here. So we shouldn't be too surprised when time and chronology get a little cattywampus in John's gospel. In this frame set between Ascension and Pentecost, Jesus slides easily from past to present to future as he talks and he prays. As he prays, he remembers, you gave these disciples to me and they have kept your word. I have guarded them. He also observes, they know that everything you have given me is from you. They believe you have sent me and they belong to you. So this is the present. And then he anticipates what is still to come so that they may become one, so that they may have my joy made complete. Protect them from the evil one. Sanctify them in the truth. We're hearing, we're overhearing Jesus pray for his friends, listening in on this conversation between Jesus and his father. 
just as even now he prays for us, having carried us in his ascension into the very heart of God. As he prays for his disciples in the upper room, so he prays for us here today. In this prayer, we hear something of the eternal conversation going on among Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you can see that upper room, see through it to the prayer of Jesus, if you can imagine that artistry and let it capture you for a moment, well, that's why I said don't just do something, sit there. Sit there with that truth. Now, if that sounds a little spooky, a little too hyper-spiritual or mystical, hang on another minute. It, but it does matter that we take some time now and then to set our lives and our life together in the life of this wonderful parish and school in this broader and deeper context of the movement and purposes of God. Busy, productive churches, Churches, busy, productive people, busy, productive clergy are forever being tempted to think the life and mission of the church is all about us. To think that everything depends on us succeeding. Here's where Jesus' prayer becomes totally practical and very personal. What do you think he's praying for, for his disciples? Don't think out of some misguided humility that you are not included in that group. Think of the 12 that Jesus called to come and follow as a pretty ragtag bunch. Not one of them trained, certified, or ordained. Or think of the 13th apostle we heard chosen today, Matthias, whose selection we heard about coming after the roll of the dice. Not even a credit check. We never hear a word about him again or about the one not chosen who was also a witness to the resurrection. So you might as well just come on, crowd into that upper room and let yourself be part of that group and hear what Jesus has to say, not just about them way back then, but about us today. First, we hear that we belong. We are somebody simply because God says so. I am asking on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. Nobody and nothing can take away that identity. Take away what we are given in this relationship that we have with God and Jesus Christ. Eric and Katrin, help us remember this truth today in recalling us to baptism and we were sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. In Romans, St. Paul will write nothing at all in the whole creation. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all in the whole creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And in Ephesians, he'll write, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. That's who we are. And this God-given, God-sustained relationship is the starting point for us. This is what God desires for us as he does for every human being. Let's bring it down from the mystical to the practical and the personal. So, so I know this is asking a lot, but you're all masked, so it's okay. People won't notice. I want you to sneak a polite Episcopalian peek at the people around you. It's okay. You know you want to. Just look around and see who's there. And then tell yourself he or she belongs to God. Okay? Okay. Pretty easy. So what is Jesus hoping and praying for, for those who belong to God? What does he want for us to have and to know? Listen, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given to me so that they may be one as we are one. 
so that they may be one as we are one. So one thing Jesus wants for us for sure is unity. And what he wants us to do is practice unity within the life of the church and as part of our mission into the world to proclaim the reconciling, rescuing love of Jesus. Unity isn't some nice byproduct of nice people doing polite things. Unity, Jesus says, reflects the glory of God. Reveals the purposes of God for the whole creation and is part of the proclamation that Jesus gives us. When he sends the Holy Spirit to send us out into the world. Now I don't need to describe for you the disunity of the times in which we live. The principalities and the powers, spiritual forces are having a field day. Exploiting and expanding, deepening divisions. Promoting not just the fragmentation but the atomization of our world. When I was in seminary long, long ago, I heard about the church being a unity in diversity. And I loved that phrase and it made perfect sense to me. I drank deeply of that and I taught it and I preached it. I still believe it, this unity in diversity. But what I've experienced is a shrinking of that vision into a partial vision so that unity is sacrificed. And there is an emphasis solely on diversity. But diversity that doesn't serve unity, that doesn't see its purpose as supporting deeper and greater unity, seems to become a servant of the worldly movement to deepen divisions and push the people of God farther apart. Diversity is part of creation. It's part of the created order It comes easily and naturally. A diverse church, a church that celebrates its diversity is simply saying we've got more than one member. If you're married, you're in a diverse marriage. Two people are diverse. So diversity comes easily and naturally. It is a gift from God to be celebrated. But diversity is not the end game. Unity is Jesus prays for us that we may all be one. And unity is tough and needs cultivating and care. The prayer of Jesus is a prayer for the unifying power of love. That we might be one as he and the father are one. For St. George Church to be at unity, for you to practice and work at simply friendship in Christ is not just a nice, pleasant byproduct of being part of the church. In our time, in our time, serving unity is a radical missionary adventure. To go in peace, to love and serve the Lord is not just a polite dismissal telling you church is over. It could be risky behavior. And the day surely comes soon enough that you can pass the peace full on again in church. See it as training for offering the peace of Christ less safely away from here. Again, let's be practical and personal. I want you to look around again, maybe a little more boldly this time. And say to somebody, you're masked, they won't hear it. Say to somebody, Jesus is praying us into friendship. Jesus prays for our unity with him and with one another. And then he prays for more. He continues, now I am coming to you, O Father, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in them. Jesus wants us to have, he wants us to know joy. He wants us to live confidently with joy. Joy is less an emotion than an orientation. For those whose hope is in Christ, for those who trust and believe in the relationship that we have received in Christ, joy comes. In the worst of times, we remember that we belong to God. 
We have been buried with Christ in his death and raised with him in his resurrection. Our lives are hidden with God in Christ. But joy is not a solo adventure. Joy needs others with whom to share it so that joy may be complete. Joy finds delight in the other. It seeks unity and strengthens it. Joy, joy overcomes despair and conquers the world. Like unity, joy is not a nice byproduct of church life. It is an essential part of our mission to carry joy out into the world and invite people into the joy of knowing Christ. We know that not many people who need Jesus are going to want to join up with a bunch of grumpy, annoying saints. So we are called to practice joy. One more time, let's get a little more personal. Look around and let your eyes settle on someone who recalls you to joy. Look around, let your eyes settle on someone who recalls you to joy. Now really quickly, just point at them. <laughs> there you go. How, how rude is that in church, but how fun. Maybe even joyful. Maybe even joyful. Well, finally, we hear Jesus pray, as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. So I have sent my disciples into the world. And that very night before he died for us, Jesus does send his friends out into the world, into the darkness, confusion and violence that will become Good Friday. And then later, after Pentecost, lit up by the Holy Spirit, these same disciples will go out to live and share the good news of Jesus, who is one with the Father. And in whom the fullness of God is revealed. They will embody Jesus, we will embody Jesus who brings unity and friendship and joy and eternal life beginning right here, right now in this lovely framed holy moment. Week by week, you gather and practice here for life and ministry out there, discovering as you practice that by God's grace, the line between in here and out there becomes thin and blurry. And as life begins to normalize in our own time, and as our own movements and ministries and life together, both in here and away from here, becomes freer and we've got more breathing room, it's going to be very important that we regain our good habits that we stretch spiritual and missional muscles that have been dormant for quite some time and that we practice together. Unity, friendship, and joy all need a laboratory, a gym, and a playground in which to be exercised and strengthened. Showing up here, Hearing the word speak to us, listening in on the conversation between Jesus and his father, gathering at the table, all of that part of showing up here is so vital to our showing up away from here as the people of God who embody Jesus. The silly little things that I ask you to do, and notice I stayed in the pulpit, so I didn't have to actually do it myself. I was in my head, though. So those little things I ask you to do had a more serious purpose, to loosen us up for the day's discipleship, to prepare us to receive and to offer unity and joy and friendship, and to move us again closer to the very heart of God. Amen. I invite um, the Stamps family and the Drager family to come forward.
got all day. Are you ready? All right, at this time, the candidates for confirmation will now be presented. Okay, um, we present Katrin Stamps and Eric Drager for confirmation. Thank you. Okay, Katrin, if you and Eric will turn this way, and I've got these two questions for the two of you, if you'll answer together. You can look at Father Ram's book there. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? And do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Thank you. Now, if the congregation will please stand, and here's a question for the rest of you. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Then let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose again on the third day. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. As you remain standing, let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, for the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself. And that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants, Eric and Catherine, the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of the Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Catherine, first. Okay, Catherine you want to kneel here? Why don't you, let's just go this way. This way. Okay, if you want to gather around, put a hand on her shoulder. Are you ready? You've been waiting a long time, I know. Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Catherine, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Thank you. Okay, if you'll stand and just wait right there. Okay, Eric, if you'll kneel. Put a hand on his 
Defend, O Lord, this your servant, Eric, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Okay, thank you, Eric, if you'll stand right there. Thank you. Congregation, please stand. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Y'all turn and face your church family, please. I think applause is good. <laughs> The peace of the Lord be always with you. exactly I'm supposed to stand at this point. <laughs> what, luckily, wherever I stand, uh, Keith can just flip a camera on, right? Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Really glad to have you guys here. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. Uh, the first one is that today we're going to uh, begin the practice of uh, taking the communion wine by intention, okay? And what that means is uh, you'll be receiving a uh, the, the bread, the wafer, dipped in the wine, and we'll put it in your hand. So I want to, uh, so how this is going to work, the bishop is going to be right up here in the middle, kind of where, Shannon, why don't you stand right there in the middle, right where the bishop would, would stand right there. She's going to be right there. The bishop's going to be right there. And I'll be right next to the bishop on this side with one of our chalices, our new uh, intention chalices. Uh, when you come forward, you'll be invited to come forward. You can see that there is a hand sanitizer station right there. Go ahead and sanitize your hands. Um, and, and a word about that sanitation, uh, that, that, that uh, cleaner, whatever that is, the liquid, it's going to feel like it's never going to go into your skin. But right when you start thinking this is never going to go into my skin, it'll go into your skin. Okay, it'll disappear. So just, you know, keep rubbing until it goes away. So come up forward, put your hands out. Uh, let the bishop know if you'd like wine, it's okay to talk. Uh, and you might want to make, uh, you know, pronounce the words out loud because we can't see behind your mask, okay? Let us know that you want it, and then the bishop will dip it into the wine and put it into your hand. But don't worry, it won't be a lot of wine. Uh, so you won't you won't have you know super wet hands, uh, and it won't look awkward when you're you know you won't have to lick your hand. Okay, got it. Now, having said all of that, this is the first time we've done that. I, I can assure you that it's going to be just as awkward for uh, the bishop and me as it is for you. Uh, this is something uh, brand new. We're one of a few places that are. Uh, doing this to uh, help the bishop decide how uh, we're going to do this uh, diocesan wide. So thank you for uh, being willing to be a part of this. And if you do not want to receive the wine just yet, that is perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. So just, you know, put your hand out, say, I don't want any wine. We'll give you the bread and you will have uh, full communion. Okay, so clear as mud. Perfect. That's exactly what I was going for. All right. The other thing today, speaking of communion, we do have some young people who uh, have also waited for quite some time to uh, do First Communion. This, this started 
Uh, they started their, their communion class uh, 15 months ago, and then uh, we had a little hiccup, and, uh, uh, and we're just now getting ready to come and bring those kids forward and uh, have them prayed for and recognize them today as they take their first communion. So uh, luckily for them, we taught them how to do intention, even though we didn't know. So guys, you, you get here on a special day. So we're going to bring them, uh, bring them forward. I'm going to ask Happy Wilson to come up and, and uh, call each a child up by name, child and uh, I tell you what, uh, probably just the children, if that's okay, parents, y'all can stand. Uh, parents, y'all stand where you are in the pews, but we'll just have the kids come up since it's a, a, a good number, and I'll let you call them out. All right, good morning. I'm excited to announce um, and present Blakely Bison. Come forward. And Brindley Bison. Josie Maldonado. Brinkley Miller. Oliver Drager. Scarlett Earl. Stephen Muller. Caitlin Muller. And Cameron Muller. Avery Robinson. Whoops. I just knocked something off. Yeah. Um, Richard Ashton Robinson. Bear Mayberry. And Kylie Mayberry. They, they like, like I said, they started this pre-COVID. They did a lot of their work at home with their families. Thank you very much, families. And we concluded with a nice little uh, in-person slash virtual tour of the sacristy and all of the things. So uh, these, these guys have waited a year. So uh, let's give them a round of applause for their stick to it. All right, okay. So now that we've seen your pretty half faces, you all turn around, face the bishop, and he's going to offer a prayer for you guys on this special, special day of First Communion. Good morning. You all excited? It's hard to tell. I can sort of see it in your eyes, but anyway. So I noted there are 12, just like the 12 disciples, just like the people in the upper room with Jesus that we heard about this morning. Um, so thanks for helping us remember that we belong to God, uh, that we're all God's children, doesn't matter how old we are. Okay, shall we have a prayer? Anybody have any questions for Father Ram about the, the, the Eucharistic theology that she'd like to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had some a couple weeks ago. All right, well, let, let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this group of your children who are gathered here at your table. We thank you for the ways that they love and serve you and the way that they delight in the life that you have given them. We know that you delight in them as well and that you hold them close. We pray that, that they may always know themselves to belong to you, to be your precious children and to have a place at your altar and your table. O oh God, our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes again. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And bless these children, O Lord, at their first communion, that they may be nourished and fed by you, that they may know that they belong to you. All this we ask, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yay. Clap again. Y'all right. turn around one more time. Let everybody see you.
Y'all yeah, go ahead and turn around one more time so everybody can see you. And then Miss Miss Happy will uh, give you your certificate. And then once you get your certificate, you can go back and sit with your folks. And we'll call you forth, and you guys will come forward and take communion with your families at at that time. All right. For the rest of us, while the kids are getting their certificates, let's say together our offertory sentence. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me.
this time we're going to bless the two uh, small chalices that Father M ordered. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Almighty God, whose blessed Son instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, grant that all, all who receive the holy mysteries from these cups, which we now consecrate for use in your church, may be sustained by his presence and enjoy forever his heavenly benediction, who lives and reigns in glory everlasting. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy. and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks... He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. George and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Join me in saying this prayer for those who are not with us today and are receiving spiritual communion let us pray my jesus i believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar i love you above all things and long for you in my soul since i cannot now receive you sacramentally come spiritually into my heart as though you've already come i embrace you and unite myself entirely to you Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Finding myself at a loss for words, and the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say. Let me stay and rest 
as we pray and enjoy the, the blessings of communion with our Lord Jesus Christ, we also lift up today those who have asked for our prayers for the Thompson family, for Joy, Marianne, Lupe, Joe, Pat. We thank you for all of the gifts that we have in our lives, for the gift of healing, especially those healed from COVID-19, for the gift of our confirmands and their families, and for all our First Communion children and their families. We pray for those who celebrate birthdays, for Adeline Minx, Katie Redmond, Casey Garza, Dick Jodry, Dennis Murphy, Jenny Dietrich, Yvonne Spear, Harry Titus, Will Wickersham, and Fernando Cruz II. And on this day, we pray for all who have died, for us, especially for Julie Sockley and Dee Weaver, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. And we offer prayers for Trevor, Emily, Kaylee, Dan, Yori, Missy, and all who mourn Julie. And we also pray for those who love Dee, especially the Hatcher and Burnham families in their grief. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit. The honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. And before we sing, I'm tangled up. Before we sing our closing hymn, I want to let you know that we do have some uh, cupcakes for you to uh, uh, have after service. We, we can't, uh, where are they? Are they at either end? Okay, so as you go out either exit, uh, they're on tables kind of on the way out. Uh, you're, ha you're welcome to uh, step outside. It's not raining right now and, and, and eat your uh, a cupcake and uh, visit. There's also some coffee, I think, in the, in the middle, in the gathering area. You're welcome to grab a cup of coffee and then go outside and have your cupcake and en enjoy while it's not raining. So uh, do that. And our closing hymn is hymn number 688, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Strive 
you where the cupcakes are. Uh, the bishop and Reverend Susan are in the courtyard and they're uh, there. If you'd like to go greet them, uh, I'm sure they would, they'll enjoy that. I'll be out there in just a second. Alleluia, alleluia, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be God. Alleluia, alleluia. All right. Y'all have a great blessed week. Everybody in Facebook land, blessings. And here is Vivian with our postlude.